Bueno, más o menos, más o menos, esta es la panorámica. O sea, hay co otras cosas que podemos seguir añadiendo y hablando aquí ahora, pero lo importante es que ustedes entiendan esto de la timba, que es un nuevo movimiento que existe y que, y que, y que se enteren bien de lo que está pasando. Entonces me gustaría que ustedes ahora, si tienen algunas dudas, algunas preguntas que quieran hacer. Ok, he says this is just sort of a taste, a panorama of some of the techniques necessary to to learn timba, and uh, he's now opening the floor to any questions, and I'm opening the floor as well to some good native speakers um, uh, for, for help with translation. If you hear me say something wrong grammatically, feel free to correct me. <laughs> so I'll take the first question. ¿Quieres saber si tú utilizas ritmos de otros otro países también en la bomba o solamente son patrones que vengan de la música afrocubana? No, no, no. O sea, yo creo que, que la, la música es una sola. Y todo lo que, lo que tenga sabor y, y se preste lo usamos. Hay cosas brasileras, cosas puertorriqueñas, donde quiera. He says that uh, good music comes from all over the world. And uh, they listen to it and appreciate music from everywhere. And whatever patterns that they enjoy, they bring it into their music as well. Lo que la esencia, la esencia es cubana, con nuestros ritmos. He says, but the essence of the rhythms, of course, has a Cuban identity. He says, uh, his question is, how can you separate so much that is incorporated in here playing? Um, he's familiar with timba, and he can hear that all these techniques we were talking about are a fusion of jazz stylings and a fusion of drumming styles and a fusion of son all mixed together into this one big, beautiful sculpture. However, he's sort of saying, how would you separate the the different styles in your playing so that people who are maybe not so familiar with th the form, the idiom itself, um, how can they start taking it apart and thinking about how you fuse those things? Precisamente, precisamente lo que, no, lo que queremos es no separarlo. <laughs> He says what their goal is not to separate anything, is to just bring it into this brand new painting, this sculpture. Eh, sabemos que es un poquitico trabajoso, que es un poquitico complicado, pero eh, en la vida siempre hay retos que hay que vencer y la timba, de eso se trata, de salirse completamente de cómo era el bajo en otro momento. Esta es una historia completamente nueva. He says the, the goal in timba is not to separate it all, is to put it all together. And although there are ways to sort of read through all the little parts, um, um, it's, it's something that you have to slowly, spe step by step, conquer and um, take little bits at a time, kind of conquer the clave, con conquer the harmonic motion, conquer the dead notes, and eventually more and more of that style will become familiar to you, but it takes work, and he understands that. <risa> de, de, de hecho, cuando empezamos a, hace alrededor de 25 años, un poco más, cuando empezamos con este movimiento de la timba, eh, yo empecé a recibir muchas críticas. Ok, uh, he was deepening the question, he was asking, what exactly goes through your mind when you're playing all these really interesting patterns? And um, Feliciano was saying, was when that music was being formed, it was being created, Uh, there was a lot of criticism and um, 
and Timba was not easily sort of absorbed at first. Porque mucha gente decía que que con esto no se podía bailar. Porque el bajo, como siempre es la columna vertebral de la música y venía del son tan limpia, las notas aquellas tan largas, tan llenas. Cuando cuando vino todo esta yago, la gente decía, no, no se puede bailar con eso." The the most common ¿Sí? criticism when it was first in, heard and brought to the public was that it was extremely hard to move to because it was uh, such a such a dense bass line and they were so used to a very clean, precise placement of the bass line and the bass notes. So the very first initial criticism was these bass lines are so busy and they're so syncopated, we can't really enjoy the music like we were used to enjoying dance music from the song period. Por eso es que en este libro también hablamos de la liberación del bajo. Sabemos que esto no va a traer problemas. <laughs> Más problemas todavía hay que tengo. Pero, pero es que los bajistas necesitamos respirar también. O sea, en todos los géneros, el bajo siempre ha estado subyugado y, y se ha ido liberando, ¿me entiendes? Y en la música cubana, no, no se fue liberado. Entonces, llegaron los libertadores. So, <laughs> so he, talks, he, he talks about how um, Timba sort of liberated the bass from these shackles. Um, and uh, it was... It was something pretty revolutionary at the time, and he says kind of probably still so, but bass players, we need to breathe. We need to invent. We need to improvise. We need to live in the rhythms. And um, the timberos were brave enough, and Feliciano was like the father of doing that, and just kind of put himself out there and, and, and shared all of that knowledge and put it in the music. Well, it seems difficult, you know, in the U.S. where we don't have that, that same culture uh, to sort of get access. Well, I'm going to interject before I even translate for Faley, and I want to say that this is why you're so fortunate for these programs. And this is kind of what we, me as an individual, Feliciano and his, and his family, really want to bring the music to everybody's living room on some level. Um, and this is the goal of everyone in this room. Uh, and great thanks to Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley has saved you. For me, it took 10 years, you know, of, of figuring out a way to get there and studying and saving my money and being broke and running into all kinds of things. But here you have it at your doorstep because the attention is the same. We want to start sharing all this beautiful music that's being done all over the world. Um, la, la pregunta fue... Por eso, por eso es que en, en el libro este hay alrededor de 30 páginas cuando empieza. Este es un libro de timba y hay 30 páginas de son, hablando del son, que el son es una estructura muy fuerte, más tranquila, muy entendible y es el paso a la timba. O sea, no vas a ir a la guerra sin el alma, ¿no? O sea, primero te preparas con el son, te preparas y después que empiezas a evolucionar. Um, he, he said the goal in our book was precisely that, to somehow find a way to translate. And it really it was about me being thoroughly confused at every lesson and going, just how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you think about that? And we started, I had played, I had played Latin music, and we started with, with song, something that I knew. And in our book is pretty much the documentation of that journey of being thoroughly confused and then fighting hard, talking a lot, figuring it out, and then we documented it. So, you know, we know the struggle and we are here to, to ease the struggle for everyone who's not familiar. That's what the goal is. Pregunta, pregunta, pregunta. Ask me, ask me, ask me. <laughs> No 
caso de los instrumentos que tienen que estar, pero de los servicios públicos. Eh, claro, eh, claro. Uh, the audience member suggestion, which was a sound one, was um, any instrumentalist um, should, in order to really understand this music, needs to not only, even if they play saxophone or trumpet or piano, uh, would probably need a really good knowledge, foundation knowledge of percussion. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't um, emphasize that more. My actual, before I was working with Bailey, I met Eugenio and I studied percussion with him two weeks. Never want to play in public, God no. But just to get that foundation and it's a great suggestion to start. Una, una de las cosas que aprendemos cuando empezamos a estudiar música es a escuchar a los que están con nosotros tra trabajando, ¿no? O sea, es imposible hacer, tocar y no, no sabe lo que hace un batería, lo que hace un tumbador. Entonces, si conocemos lo que está pasando a nuestro alrededor, entonces es más fácil lograr, o sea, lograr la cohesión entre los músicos y si se trata de música cubana, bailable sobre todo, lograr el sabor entre todos. Y cuando el público ve que tú estás gozando, ellos también gozan. Entonces hay que aprender todo lo que se puede aprender de afuera, que eso nos enriquece a nosotros. Okay, he says uh, it's, it's kind of every musician's responsibility in the group to really understand what's going on in the drums. Not necessarily be able to play it, but to understand what is going on, the language of the conversation that is going on, and then to enter the conversation as, as whatever your instrument needs, your instrumental needs are. But he feels that it's kind of a basic requirement that you know the, the language, or at least the patterns, the beginning patterns. También pasa una cosa. Si nosotros hubiéramos tenido esta gran oportunidad que, por ejemplo, que nos ha dado ahora la dirección de música de Berkeley, el señor Larry Simpson, el señor Neil, Neil, Neil Leonard, de, de poco a poco eh, mostrar lo que, lo que hacemos, hubiera sido más fácil. Pero, ¿qué pasa? Que han pasado años de música cubana y esto se va complicando. La, no es nuestra culpa, tenemos que evolucionar. Entonces, tanto se ha complicado que ya no estamos ni con la tumbadora, estamos ahora en las protimbas. O sea, seguimos para allá y estamos trabajando hasta con los batas, que son instrumentos muy difíciles de entender. Okay, he, he wanted to say uh, that the directors of this program have brought them here for this precise reason, to start introducing things. Um, and it's, it's kind of 10 years behind in terms of what is going on in Cuba now. They have, they have progressed so far from this place, but this is the place to start. And uh, right now, the, the Cuban language in terms of percussion has moved to bata and has moved to afrotimba, infusing more and more. But uh, these programs and these wonderful things that are happening, kind of the doors are opening up in this country more with Cuban music, and this is the place to start. Por supuesto, esto no es obligatorio. Of course, he understands this is not a requirement. O sea, en Cuba y en el mundo hay música de bailable de la nuestra muy sencilla y muy buena said uh, in Cuba and also all over the world, there is beautiful music being made that's actually a lot simpler, and he's no, no aware of that. No hay necesidad de llegar a este extremo. <laughs> you actually are, you don't have to enter into this uh, uh, training camp. It's like the boot camp. Pero, pero el que quiere, como el que quiere seguirse superando, que sigue superando. Es como, como los improvisadores, que hay, improvisan aquí y allá, las armonías son más complicadas cada vez. Y la gente sigue, sigue. Hay quien quiere quedarse en un estilo y se queda ahí y también es feliz. Uh, he said, it's certainly not required, the boot camp. However, it's about the growth in music and the desire to grow for music in general and individuals personally. And uh, it's a struggle all the time to keep growing as a, as a musician and as a style. However, if you're happy and you play your beautiful music well, that is equally as satisfying and gratifying. It is not a road for everyone. Dime, sobrino. He said also, uh, just as the music 
has grown, so have the dances that go along with it. And this has been in this continuum of growth and development. So not most people can now easily kind of dance the basic movements of som. It's pretty, it's it's pretty, be, it's pretty universal now. You could probably go to a lot of places in the world, but in Cuba, the dance and the music has grown equally in parallel, and it's an important part of what the music is about too. Is that interaction between the dancers? Esta esta personalidad un poco un tanto agresiva que ha tomado la música cubana también es un llamado de los bailadores, como decía él, que hacen movimientos muy fuertes, entonces, o sea, con... O sea, no, no. He's, uh, <laughs> He's saying that <laughs> the aggression of the music is also something that was demanded from the dancers. As dance <laughs> movements began to change and grow, they didn't want to move in those softer, smoother lines. They really wanted to sort of move in these more aggressive lines. And so the command came from both art forms, the music and the dance. Y otra cosa muy importante, que eso pasa en, en todo, es como un compositor, o sea, si, si, no, pues, si no empiezas compo componiendo un concierto, una sonata, algo así, o sea, pasar directamente a la música electroacústica sería una cosa sin pasar por esos detalles, ¿no? Yo, mi consejo siempre es que, que el que quiera saber de música cubana que, que conozca el dan, el, la contradanza, el danzón, el son, y después, entonces, que venga la guerra, a la batalla. <risa> <risa> pero, pero no es directo aquí, no, hay que pasar por aquello, como nosotros cuando queremos estudiar jazz, también tenemos que ir a, lo, a, lo, a, lo, a los maestros del principio, y primero rebuscamos aquello, nos metemos a ver cómo va a avanzar, y después ya empezamos a oír las cosas actuales. He said, you know, it's not required to just jump into this. He says it's important to actually sort of start from those very basic steps, from son and dan son, and be familiar, not necessarily be able to play everything, but be very, very familiar, and be happy to start with those steps um, and before just like warring against something that's so difficult. And um, he said they, as Cubans, had to sort of do the same backpedaling in order to absorb jazz. They had to start with the very, very, very early simple jazz, which was very foreign to them. As foreign as jazz was to them, and they have learned through the years, they understand that road. And they say you start, you start from what you can absorb, and then you grow from there. Ahora, ahora para, para cerrar más o menos esta linda conversación que hemos tenido, vamos a tocar un poquitico con, con los tambores bata algo sencillo para que ustedes vean toda la rítmica que nos brinda que el maestro sí lo sabe la riqueza de los de los tambores batá y y cómo nos vamos fundiendo poco a poco con esta música afrocubana. Uh, he wants to sort of close the session with uh, some more sharing of the music and he's going to incorporate the batá and the timba and the things we've talked about. Um, <coughs> And that's all. So if, there, if there's any more questions, we're also selling the books. Um, if you'd like to take a look at them or buy them, they'll be available at the end, along, along with some CDs of Los Hermanos Arango. So I leave you to the music. Vamos a hacer el tema sí. este que se llama Yemayá. Es un tema sí. muy, muy suave. Yemayá es la, es la dueña de las aguas del mar. O sea, a veces se pone brava y se pone malo tsunami y se acabó. <risa> <risa> Pero ella es así. <risa> sí, sí. Yemayá, desde la Maiboru.
Y en María la cual agua. A la cual agua, la agua. Y en María Genile y el otro. A que le llama. O tú me acotas el lepe. O tú me llamas el otro que te van a bañar. Y en María el otro. El huevo y el quilaro. O tú me agua. Y de agua yo y ya y en María.
Si hubiera un piano, los invitaba. Dos grandes pianistas de Cuba, grandísimos. Pero no hay piano. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias por la atención prestada.